Hey everyone, this is Stefan James from Project Life Mastery. I'm here right now at SellerCon, which is the number one e-commerce event on how to get started to build your Amazon and e-commerce business. I'm here right now with Chris Schweiber, who's come here from, uh, from Ontario. He's a fellow Canadian like myself. Uh, been following me for a few years, and it's a pleasure to take the time to get to know you a little bit. I know you uh, got started selling on Amazon last year through the Amazing Seller Machine. Mm -hmm. Launched your first product in April. And uh, the last 30 days, it had about 20,000 in sales. So mm -hmm. just uh, looking forward just to share with you a little bit with my audience, your story and how you got started and share some value for them. So sure. It's an honor. I, uh, I just said to Stefan before that it's, uh, it's a privilege and an honor to be here and I've followed you for a long time. And uh, it's a bit surreal to be sitting here with you, but uh, uh, it's amazing and I'm, and I'm excited and, and appreciate the opportunity. Awesome. Well, I appreciate taking the time. Do you mind just sharing with people how, how you got started selling on Amazon, how you came across Amazing Sell Machine? And I guess the journey I want to walk people through, because I know a lot of people are in that position where they're looking to start selling and I like to provide these these interviews as a source of inspiration, sure. role models and references for others. So how did this all start for you? It, um, it's a good question. It's something that uh, I, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur at heart. I've always loved business. Um, not to bore you too much with my story, but um, I was never great at math in school, but I always loved business and selling stuff and making money. So I sort of veered away from it, but eventually I got started in university taking, you know, taking law, so a non-business program, but I switched and took a business course and, uh, and loved it. And, and I've always been sort of an entrepreneur at heart. So um, I always had small businesses and, and did things, but um, as I kind of got, um, you know, built other businesses and had some success, I'm like, well, how can I, what can I, how can I make it easier? How can I, you know, where, where, where's the opportunity? So I've always kind of looked at e-commerce and, and being able to sort of make money while I, while I sleep. So uh, I've been watching ASM, you know, just videos and, and following it, learning about it for the last probably, past probably four or five years. And then, um, um, my wife launched a business. She was really, really busy with it for the past uh, couple of years. Um, she's um, slowed down a bit and working on building her brand. And um, it was just the right time. So um, uh, the opportunity came up with you to, to right. sign up through, uh, through ASM 10. So I signed up in October of, uh, of last year. And, uh, and that's how I got started. So um, it was a, I, I'm a bit analytical and, yeah. and uh, if there's a, a proven model that works and with somebody that I trust, then, uh, then I'm all in. So that's kind of the proof that I need and, and, uh, and, uh, and got started and, and, and made a big commitment to say, if I'm doing this, I'm doing it right. I'm going to be all in and, and, and give it my heart and soul. And so far, so good. That's awesome. Yeah. So you, you knew about ASM, I guess, for a while. What, what do you think was holding you back from joining back then? Was there something that changed for you that, I guess, last year that you decided, okay, this is the year, this is when I'm going to start this? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I, I think it was just timing. I think just based on what we have, we have a little guy, he's six. And uh, I think just based on timing, you know, my wife was out with her career and I have a full-time job. So uh, during the day, so um, it was just really finding the right opportunity and just really fully dis like deciding and, and committing to it. And um, uh, the timing was right. We were just in a space where my wife had worked really hard and uh, I was ready and, uh, and the opportunity came up and I'm like, I'm, I've been watching this, I'm ready to do it. And here it is. And, and you providing so much value with, with, your, um, uh, with your affiliate with ASM that it just made it that much easier. Um, I remember saying to my wife, like, Steph, you can't believe what, what they're offering and all the value. A lot, and a lot of bonuses. A ton of yeah. bonuses. And, and I just said, this might not happen again. I need to do this. And, uh, you know, we, we, I, my family was on board and, and they said, do it. And uh, it's been good. So that's awesome. Yeah. So, what was your experience like, I guess, when you first joined in October? Um, I, you know, doing the product research, how did you, how did you go about finding the product and, and what was that journey and experience like? Yeah, um, it, it, it takes a while. Um, I didn't know what product I wanted to sell. So I was a little bit uh, hesitant because I'm like, I'm starting this journey and I've made this commitment, but I don't really know what I want to sell. Um, um, ASM has a, has a criteria um, to find products that really work. And uh, so I tried to find, follow that model. I searched in categories. I felt like I could be, that I, I understood and could be passionate about. And, um, and as I got into it, I started to find products that I went, that, that fit the criteria. And it, I felt like I could really get behind. And as I dug further, I started to find products that would support that product that I could actually build a brand with. So I, I started looking sort of four, five, six products ahead and found probably three or four different opportunities that would work. And then I uh, sent my product, uh, top three product list right. to you to review and, and, and got the information back from you. 
And, um, and, and I had two that I really liked. One I felt like had more potential. Um, I had um, some issues just sourcing it um, with, with a supplier, just ran into a few snags, um, really trying to improve it and, and make it better and sort of create a, a uh, you know, a, the best product I could. So I started with the other one and, um, and it's been working well. And, and uh, my, my thought process was I want to launch this other one and, and learn from it and apply those learnings to the one I think that could be, right. could be really big. So, um, yeah, so it's, uh, the, the, the product research um, piece does take some time, yeah. but um, you have to just go with what you feel. I, I, there are things I couldn't sell. I, we don't have pets. I couldn't sell pet products. I just, I, I couldn't get excited to get behind them, but products that I use every day or that um, um, are just much, much easier to get I think that's an important piece to put the right energy behind it. Yeah, I agree yeah. with that. I think also what you did of just thinking bigger picture of a brand, because I think a lot of people, they might just look at selling a widget on Amazon. And even right. though the criteria can make sense, it could be high demand or make you some money. But I, I like to also look at having a passion for it or maybe at least some level of belief that if you're right. going to get behind it, you know, if you can't get behind your product, then how can you expect someone else to? And I think by having that extra passion or love for it, you can just go so much further with it. Absolutely. Um, um, to me, it's, you know, the, even, even the ASM model is not just launching a product and kind of crossing your fingers. It's, it's thinking bigger and, uh, and, and building a brand. And um, it's uh, to even go beyond Amazon, which yes. is really cool. Yeah. yeah. And I think another thing you mentioned, too, that I know a lot of people might be able to relate to is not knowing what to sell. Right. And uh, even I find, like, when I got started, I joined with ASM4. Um, I had some ideas about what I was going to sell that all of that changed once I went through the criteria. Yeah. And so I found that, you know, it can't help to have an idea of what you might want to sell, but you don't need to know at all. I think right. if you go in with an open mind and, you know, there's some products like for me, for example, um, one of the ideas I had was to sell a water bottle. But once right. I went through the criteria, it just didn't make that much sense. I couldn't really differentiate it that much. There wasn't that much that I could do with it. Right. And so the product that I started with was very different uh, than what I had in my mind. So I think that's what's great about ASM is that it'll teach you how to brainstorm and find different products and go through Amazon, the different categories. There's tools like Jungle Scout and everything that can also help you go all, over all the data so that it makes sense. But um, you know, I think having an idea, at least for the niche that you might want to be in and the big picture of where you could take it. And I think what you did of thinking ahead, even about your second or third product, that's also also helpful because maybe your first product isn't as successful as you'd like it to be, right. but you learn from it, right. and the lessons that you take with that can help you for your second or third. Make it so much easier. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sort of, I guess so, like a backup plan. But um, yeah, I, I, once I get, I didn't, I didn't have that plan. But once I got into it, um, that's I started sort of making these sort of three or four boxes of products that would fit under it. And then you know, thinking about a, a brand or an image or a logo, yeah. whatever that might work, and then and then building it from there, so, yeah. yeah. So what, uh, I guess, what happened when you first launched the product? Did it sell right away, or was there, did you have to do a lot of marketing promotion for it, or how did that work? Um, it did start to sell right away. So I was selling um, sort of five to 10 units a day without any reviews, which was a bit of a surprise. But, um, you know, what do I attribute that to? Um, I, I think doing, following the model of having a great listing, great photography, I, I hired um, a, a professional photographer to do my photos. Um, and really just trying to, to follow the model and not only do it well, but do it really well. Um, uh, great feedback from you. Um, uh, you gave me some good uh, feedback even on my main image and, um, and uh, create infographics. Um, just try to do all the things right. I, 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 didn't, I, didn't, I did things on a budget, but I didn't skimp um, because I'm in a comp competitive category and it needs to stand out. So how does it do that? And, and you need to do, the, do all the small pieces, right? So that's how I was a bit shocked about getting, yeah. getting that many reviews or that many um, sales. sales without any reviews. Um, and then so far it's kind of slowly, slowly started to pick up. Um, there was really only one other competitor too um, with the product with the same variation that I had and they did very well. So they, they sold about uh, 2,000 units in their third month. Um, so I thought, okay, if I can just get a small piece of that, but I also need to be aware that there's other competition coming. So if something works, be more people are going to try and do it. So um, trying to be really proactive and, and stay ahead of that curve and, 
and, um, and do things right. So, so far it's, it's now about 18 to 20 a day, 25 a day, and, um, and now selling in Canada too. So, uh, so it's, been, it's been good. And, and getting yeah. you some reviews. Slow to get reviews, that's yeah. been a, uh, a challenge, but I think I've got 21 reviews now on my product, so. Yeah. Yeah, I know you've done a great job of looking at your listings. Oh, really, okay. Really professional and well done. And I just think those little details make a big difference. And, um, you know, when you're trying to improve and optimize it, it makes, it's, it's so important. Um, now, you started in the U.S., Amazon.com. Yep. You're a Canadian, just like myself. Yep. Uh, now you started in Amazon.ca. You know, a lot of people think that they have to sell in the country they live, but you don't need to. Um, do you mind just kind of sharing your thought process around selling on Amazon.com and then now... Uh, why you decided to sell on Amazon.ca? Sure, yeah. Um, starting in, in uh, Amazon.com in the U.S., ASM recommends that you do that only because the market is so much bigger. Um, Americans are very well versed in uh, in online shopping, yeah. uh, more than Canadians are per se. I don't. I remember seeing the stats. I can't remember them off the top of my head, but they are more comfortable buying online, um, and the market obviously is much bigger. Um, so selling in the U.S. as a Canadian, you would think it'd be more challenging than it is. Um, ASM walks you through the process. You really only need um, what's called an EIN number, which you um, which you apply for uh, in the U.S. Uh, with the IRS. Uh, it's something that can be done over the phone. It takes like 10 minutes. Um, I had a small hiccup where they were on um, they were on a public uh, work uh, basically layoff. It was right around Christmas time. I think there it was a, uh, a tax uh, money issue, but. Um, uh, so I, I was panicking a bit, but eventually so getting get it. I couldn't get it, okay. and um, so I remember posting on on the ASM chat group about, "Is anybody having success? Can anybody advise me how to do this?" And um, anyways, it, it turned out that they started putting in some uh, uh, a few staff members and people answering the phone, and, and I got through and I got it done. But it was a it was a ten minute process over the phone. It was very easy to do. Um, so selling in the U.S. Uh, the the biggest uh, um, piece, the biggest thing that is, is helpful to Canadians is hiring a freight forwarder. They handle everything for you. So if you're getting something made in China, um, your forwarder contacts them. Uh, they take care of all the shipping arrangements. Um, they receive it in the U.S. and they get it to Amazon for you. So you really don't have to touch it. It's, it's amazing. But a freight forwarder is worth their weight in gold. Um, there's good ones and bad ones, but ASM recommends some. You do as well. And um, they make the process really, really, really easy. So it's amazing. You, you, you almost wouldn't think you could do it, but uh, just an EIN number, you need that for customs, and, uh, and your forwarder really takes care of the rest. So um, uh, at Selling in Canada, um, ASM typically says that you, whatever you sell in the U.S., you probably sell about 10% of that. So every $100 you sell in the U.S., you sell $10, $10 in Canada. I just felt like being a Canadian that um, I would have more traction and be able to get more reviews and, and just have a bigger impact, even though the market's smaller. And I looked at my product and I looked at the category and I thought, you know what, this, it's, it, it, on Jungle Sweat it comes up as being uh, low demand, low competition. So the low competition thing is a good thing, yeah. low demand is not. So I thought, how can I create demand for this product, right? So with social media, I just thought there were ways to do that and, and, and just hustling to create more awareness for the product. I've, I did a lot of thinking about that. but. Um, so uh, launched in Canada, and um, we're doing, uh, I guess about six weeks ago, but we're doing almost half of our sales in Canada. So, oh, wow. so beating those odds, um, uh, or stats, I guess I should say, but um, uh, Canada's been good. I, I think um, my thought process was, I think the Canadian market gets ignored a little bit. Um, as I say, Canadians aren't as well versed as shopping online, but they're getting there and they will get more versed. So my thought was, how do I stay ahead of the curve? How do I stay ahead of the competition? If I can launch now, and, and make sure it's sustainable, get reviews and build a reputation and gain some traction. And, uh, and so far it's, it's working, so. Mm -hmm. What kind of challenges have you faced along the way? Is there, I know you mentioned the EIN, but is there any other challenges that you faced? Um, I think um, with, with the product that I, I really liked, it was just uh, finding a supplier that um, um, could do it well. So I, I, uh, I sourced a number of, of samples of this product and um, either the sample quality wasn't good or um, the pricing would change or it just sort of dragged on. It was a, a little bit uh, frustrating and, and there was really only one main competitor for this product and I thought there's such an opportunity there and since then there's been about four or five that have launched. So I would check periodically, you know, it was a bit, uh, a bit disheartening. But um, you still have to believe, and, and I guess launching my first product, I, I've, I've gained more confidence in that. Even though it's a competitive um, category, 
if you do it right, have great photos, have a great listening, you can still make sales. So, um, so I've tried to take this other product, find a way to make it better, um, add some value to it, and, uh, and I'm still really passionate about it. So um, that was probably one, just dealing, dealing with suppliers. Sometimes you have good experience, sometimes you don't. Um, did you have that mindset with, with your first product too? Did you try to make it a little bit better or did you just sell what? I, yeah, great question. I did try and make it better. So, so that category was very competitive. Um, uh, I, I liked the product, but I thought, how can I make this better? So I found a supplier that I really liked. And, uh, and I said to them, is there a way to, how can, we, how can we add value? How can we make this better? And they said, why don't you, why don't you do this? Why don't you put this, this thing on it? And uh, that's a great idea. So I did some research, only one other person doing it. Um, so how can I add more value? So I did that and then added some, some, a bonus inside of the package to add value and, um, and, and, and put a warranty on it too, like a lifetime warranty. Right. So it creates trust for, right. the, for the consumer. Most, some do that, some don't. Um, uh, so, so, that's, so I did try and yeah. find a way to differentiate it to, to make it better. What you did was just asking the supplier. Right. You know, just the supplier knows the product, they manufacture it. And so just asking them, do you have any ideas on what we could do to make it better? So, yep. One other hiccup I had too was um, my first review was a two-star review. Right. So uh, sales kind of stopped and, and panicked and I thought, is this, is this product really that bad? Is this, is this the end of it for me? And, uh, and my sales just kind of, I was you know, selling five to eight a day and all of a sudden I was down to one, none, zero. So that was, that was a bit, uh, you know, a bit, I guess, shocking. In, in, but you need to believe in your product. If, if you know it's great quality, um, you need to believe it. And, and the re review that I got was kind of a strange one. And some people thought it was probably a competitor that was trying to slow me down a little bit. Um, I always comment on all the reviews. I always appreciate, like, thank people for, for whether it's good or bad and thank them for their feedback. But someone else who I don't know said, really, like, you really need to know that about this product or how to use it. Right. Like, you need, it was, the review was, um, you know, the product didn't come with any instructions. And someone said, do you really need instructions on how to use the product? So, yeah. um, so it was a bit of a funny one, but things have changed and, and uh, reviews have been really good. And, uh, and, and but it's, that was a, that was a, a, a tricky time. And it, it's not necessarily the number of reviews. I'm sure that can absolutely help, but it was just the overall rating. Cause right. you, you typically want to keep it over four stars. Uh, but that two, you know, just that one two star one would hurt some of the trust that people would have in the product. Right. So, so I guess after that, you got positive reviews that came in, or yeah, I, I used um, and this is recommended through ASM to use uh, Amazon's early reviewer uh, program, and uh, it's about six, 50, $60, sixty dollars, and uh, they source five reviews for you. Um, it takes a bit of time. It took probably at least a month before I saw the first one, um, and there's no guarantee what the review will be. So if, it's, if your product's not great, it could be a bad review. But you're guaranteed to get, uh, they, they guarantee you should get five. Um, and, and they were good reviews. They're all four and five star reviews and then things have, have picked up since. So um, they've all been, been pretty good. So the reviews piece is tough. I don't, I'm still trying to figure that one out. Uh, Amazon uh, is cracking down on, on false reviews. Um, so I've tried to source them organically and try to do it right. Um, it's a little bit challenging when you see, you know, a competitor launch and all of a sudden they've got 10 five-star reviews in the first week right. and they, they, they seem a little bit too good to be true, but um, you just need to, need to believe in it, know your product's good, uh, offer value, uh, you know, make sure you're, you're commenting on people's feedback and appreciating it and it, it slowly starts to happen. Yeah, and I, I know you're selling on Amazon, but you've also started building some of your own website and mm -hmm. social media. Do you mind sharing a little bit uh, what's been working for you there? Yeah, um, the, the website, I, I, in terms of building the brand, that stuff's really important because if anybody goes to your Amazon listing and they see your brand name, lots of times they'll do research. I know I do that. So I'm like, who, who is this company or where are they from? So I really wanted to build a website that uh, provide a lot of credibility if somebody wasn't sure. Um, it's not super elaborate, I only have one product. Um, I, I decided to hire um, like a smaller branding company, like kind of like a boutique brand, branding company to help me with that. Um, I, I could have done it, but again, just having a full-time job and, and being busy trying to launch the product, I tried to outsource a, a little bit that was, that was you know, reasonable in terms of price and cost. Um, so I thought, I, I really want this to be done well. It, it's, it's social proof, it's very important. Um, so I, I hired a professional photographer through them and, uh, and they built, it's more like a landing page. Um, I thought I had to have this elaborate website and I don't think you need to, especially with one product. And, and what they're telling me is most people, when they go to a website, they're so used to scrolling through their phone that typically now they're used to websites that 
almost sort of scroll up and down versus going from page to page to page. Um, so that's how I have it set up right now. Um, I'm not getting a lot of, uh, of organic traffic to it, so we're starting to work on that now. Um, and through them, I am also have outsourced my social media ads. So um, I have kind of an expert that does pay-per-click stuff on Facebook and Instagram. Um, my branding company makes up the ads. They just use the photos and make a couple comments, nothing, nothing elaborate, but, uh, but they work. Um, and I, it, there's days I see spikes in sales and, and um, we'll kind of text back and forth and they'll say, yeah, um, I, I ran some ads here. And, and they've, they've um, you know, asked me for certain areas and certain age groups and certain locations. And, uh, and it's been helpful. And Amazon loves that traffic from um, outside uh, yeah. uh, platforms. Yeah. So, um, so building, to me, building your social media and building your website is important to build credibility for your brand. It separates you from, from everybody else. And my big thing was, if I was to go and look at their website, I, I need to look at it and go, yeah, th these, this, this is the real deal. I, I, I trust these people. Makes sense. Yeah. So you've been having great success, you know, a lot sooner than most people I'd say would. I mean, 20,000, including the U.S. and Canada. Mm -hmm. What has that done for your mindset now? You know, like I'm sure when you first get into this, you're a little bit nervous, as many people are. You're a little bit uncertain. But now that you've seen what you've done, does it kind of shift like the opportunity that you see now um, over the next few months, this year, moving forward about what this can really do for your life? Yeah, it does. I think now that it's selling and a uh, yeah, huge mindset shifts, so a lot more confident, yeah. a lot more comfortable. I think the, um, the uneasiness of start, first launching and is this going to work or not, I think that's gone now. Um, I, I've, I've got a, a really good place uh, on page one of all the key search words on, on Amazon.com and Amazon Canada. And even if I have a good day or a bad day, they still stay there. So that gives me more confidence too that everything's staying on, on page one. Um, and now I want to grow. So um, it's interesting. ASM kind of tells you to, to, to start with one product, really get it down, really nail it before you grow. But I had all these ideas and in, in, in to, to kind of build. So I thought, I don't want to, I've got some momentum. I want to try and keep going. Um, the trick is obviously funding it. I need to buy inventory to do it. So that, that's, that's um, a bit of a challenge um, to, to try and launch more products. But um, what I've learned in the first two and a half months with the one product, um, I can now apply to, to another brand. So, so right now I'm in the process of launching with my first product. I'm launching two more, kind of a good, better, and best version of that product. Um, I think there's a lot of opportunity for it in Canada. But um, again, when it comes to social proof and even running social media ads, I can, I can promote three products instead of just one. So now I'm, taking, I'm making better use. I'm getting better value out of my social media and my website. So it seems like it's an upfront cost in the beginning, but as you start to add more products to it, it's already there. So it's easy to add them on. And so you start to, your profit margins start to get better and better and better. So um, you need to be aware of that. It's not to get rich quick. You're not gonna start making money right away. Um, your profit margins will get better. You, know, you have to start out being, you know, a little bit underpriced of where you want to go. And as you get more reviews and build more trust, you can you can increase those profit margins. So you need to be patient with that. But um, um, yeah, now that I'm selling um, um, more confidence and uh, and excited to grow and, and launch a new brand and and um, and I think learning what I've learned so far, it'll make it that much easier. Yeah, yeah. totally. Um, I want to ask just about the time because I know you work full time. You've got a six-year-old, mm -hmm. right? You've got a relationship and everything too. And mm -hmm. so I know a lot of people are in that similar position where they're working, they're doing this on the side. Any, any tips or advice or how did, you, how did you manage it with your schedule to build your business while also working full time? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I, I think the number one um, piece of advice is to make sure your family's on board. So, yeah. so share with them what, what, what you want to do, how this can benefit everybody, um, you know, the, the opportunities they could provide. And, uh, and get them on board, you know, make, make it fun for everybody. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm active with my little guy, I help coach hockey and, and I'm very involved with him. Um, but when he goes to bed at eight o'clock, then that's when, I, that's when I go to work. So um, there's lots of other things I could be doing at eight o'clock. I, I missed, I'm a huge Toronto Maple Leafs fan. I missed a lot of hockey games, they got a good team. I missed a lot of- The Raptors won. The Raptors <laughs> won. So I, I, uh, I missed a lot of that um, the past year, but um, you know, you look at the hard work and the discipline to do it, and it's, and it's paying off. So um, getting them on board is the first thing and just carving out the time to do it. Um, so I, I would start at 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock after dinner, and, and I get him to bed, and, and uh, my wife would kind of work on her business too. And, um, you know, it, it, my suppliers in China, they're 13 hours ahead of us, so at 8 p.m. Eastern, it's 9 a.m. the next day in China, so they're just starting the work day. So it was a good time to get stuff done, like from 8 till midnight or 11 or even later. 
Um, when I first started out and doing product research, I was, I was up late. I, I, I definitely had some late nights and, and, uh, and, and made some sacrifices, but it was short term. I, I call it short term yeah. pain for long term gain. Yeah. Um, and uh, you're tired, but everyone understands, your family understands why you're a little bit tired, but uh, still getting things done. And, um, and now I'm starting to dial that back and, yeah. and manage my, uh, um, you know, I've got, now that the product's launched and the hard work's done, yeah. it, it's easier. So um, you need to make, be able to make that sacrifice and commit, but it's not forever. It doesn't have to be. And you can kind of go at your own pace. So, yeah. Yeah. And then that's something that I talk a lot about too, is that part of getting what you want is knowing you have to, to give up to have it. You know, that's a price that you have to pay. And it's a sacrifice, you know, time with your family, with your wife and having fun and whatnot. But you got to believe in the long term enough that it's going to be worth it. And then it's going to then provide that freedom because I, I as well had to make a lot of sacrifices, but I knew that a year from now, two years from now, that's when you're going to have the freedom to travel, to you know, take time off or do whatever you want to do. And so you have to really believe in that vision uh, of your business and, and, and also want it bad enough, be committed to it. Exactly. Was there a certain reason why, like a, a why that drives you to build your business and, and make those sacrifices? Um, that's a good question. Um, I think... Um, um, my big why obviously is my family and my son. I, I, my, my wife and I like to travel and um, we want to be able to give them opportunities that maybe that we, we didn't have. Um, and I also just love entrepreneurship. I, I love business. So um, I, I, didn't, I didn't really real, realize this till I was an adult, but um, I, I remember I always had a job as a kid and, and I always like selling things and trying to hustle to make money to buy whatever, to buy a cool shirt or jean pair of jeans or whatever. Um, so I was always kind of hustling, selling stuff. But I, but I was terrible in math in school, t like terrible. And I, I leave a math class in high school just so dejected. So I, I steered away from business. I always thought that to be, to be really prominent in business, you need to be this great uh, student in math. So I, I, I took law for a year in university and, uh, and, and just didn't, I didn't feel comfortable and didn't really know where I was going with it. I ended up taking a business course and, um, and loved it. And um, I think over the time, I've always, I've always had a job. I think, you know, I've always had this dream of, running my business and so I've always had side businesses I've always done stuff to, to make extra money to try and get ahead um, but as I as I've, I've done those businesses and had some success I've always thought about oh, how, what can I do next how, what, how can I do something that's bigger so making money while you sleep and creating an e-com business there's just so many tools and so many resources to do it and I like learning new things so um, that's why I've been watching the program because in the back of my mind I, I always thought I, I want to do this I think this is the best way to do it. So I need to find people that I trust that have done it, and uh, much like yourself, and, um, and and that's what got me there. I might have gotten off topic with the question. No, that's perfect. Okay. I, I guess the last one I have just for you is, you know, people that are watching this, maybe in that position that you were watching the videos and mm -hmm. kind of exploring this as an opportunity uh, for them to get started to change change their life. Any advice that you'd give to someone like that that might be watching this, maybe in a position of where you were, uh, or maybe they're on the fence or they're not sure? Yeah. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a commitment, and I think you need to, if you're not fully committed to the process, then you'll find an excuse to stop. Um, my, um, we, we were talking a bit earlier in, in, you know, about the opportunities it can provide, so I, I saw the, the long-term potential and what a business like this can provide, um, but I also said, well, what's the worst case scenario? You know, if, if, if this doesn't work, what's the worst case? So I thought, I'm gonna learn a ton. I love to learn new things. So this is something that I've always wanted to learn about. So um, I don't, I don't wanna ignore it. I, I wanna give this uh, my best shot. And if it doesn't work, well, I sell all my inventory, right? You can still sell it off and get most of my money back realistically. And that's that. Um, but I, I just knew that, and, and ASM offers you, um, you know, a, a buyback promise. They, they are, if, you, if the business, if you don't sell any yeah. um, units, they, they give you a huge safety net. Yeah. Um, so there's, there's, they take some of that fear out. So um, that's one thing I'd advise to people is when you look at ASM, look at all the value that they provide, look at the value that you provide, um, and, there, and there's a great support system and a nice safety net there. But the biggest thing is mindset. You need to be committed to it. It's, it's a big commitment, and it's not a, it's not a get rich quick scheme. It's not gonna happen overnight. So if you wanna make a few extra bucks quickly, this isn't it. Yeah. If you wanna build a long-term business that can completely change your life, this is it. So if you get committed to it, take your time, follow the program, and, uh, and really find a way, you know, any of the businesses I had before, um, there's lots of people that do them, but not everyone does it really well. 
So, and doing things really well is doing, I feel is doing the small things right that most people don't do. And that's what people notice. So I would try to, uh, try to apply that to this, you know, find a way to do it, but do it better. And it's usually in the small things in, in service. And, um, and that's what I, if, if, that's my, my um, advice for people. If you're thinking about doing this, it's a big commitment. Get your family on board. Your mindset has to be there. Believe in it and, and give it time. Give it your all, but, but give, it, give it time. Yeah, I love it. Well, I think your story is going to inspire a lot of people and help them um, just by providing another example and role model. And I'm excited to hear more of what, what you're going to do for this year and to maybe see you again at this event and hear your next level of success. So thank, thank you. you, Chris. Really appreciate you're it. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks and for having me, Stefan. Thank you guys for watching this. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up here on YouTube. Subscribe for more. And we'll see you again in the next video. Take care.